Who's ready for some uh, chocolate cardamom space cake? Dude, I'm so stoned. That was just put me to sleep. Chad, I want to vomit just so I can taste your food again, man. Okay, that's gross. Yeah, that's a weird thing. I'm gonna go. I said a weird thing. That's okay. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the chocolate cardamom space cake from one of my favorite shows, High Maintenance. Oh, whoops, who left all this oregano out here? That was careless. They might get in school suspended like I did in ninth grade. Anyway, I have no idea what space cake could possibly mean, so I'm gonna take a crack at a chocolate cardamom cake with a galaxy mirror glaze. First up, the chocolate cardamom cake. Into the bowl of a stand mixer goes four large eggs along with one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Go ahead and beat that up on medium speed until it is light and frothy. Then in a separate bowl, we are tiny whisking together 150 grams of granulated sugar with a half teaspoon of kosher salt before slowly streaming it into the stand mixer while it runs. Then we're gonna beat everybody together on medium high speed for three to four minutes until it is light and fluffy. And you can easily make a figure of eight with the whisk attachment. Then onto a piece of parchment paper, we are sifting together 75 grams of all-purpose flour with 60 grams of high quality cocoa powder, about half of which we're gonna tip into our wet ingredients along with one teaspoon of the titular ingredient, ground cardamom. Go ahead and gently fold this together until mostly combined, add the rest of the dry stuff, and continue gently folding together until thoroughly combined. Then in another small bowl, we are combining 85 grams of milk with 50 grams of vegetable oil and that's, that's funny, my vegetable oil is green. Why on today, April 20th, would my vegetable oil be green? Uh, maybe they changed St. Patty's Day, I don't know. Add that to the milk, tiny whisk until thoroughly combined, and add to our main cake batter, and once again, fold gently until thoroughly combined. Then we're preheating our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and prepping a rimmed baking sheet, spraying in an X through the center and around the corners with nonstick spray, lining with a sheet of parchment paper, and pouring in our cake batter. Now, if you're anything like me, this is unfortunately gonna be the point where you realize you left out the baking powder. You're gonna wonder if you can still pull it off and then resignedly shrug your shoulders and start all over again, taking extra care to make sure you sift in the one and one half teaspoons of baking powder along with the other dry ingredients. Now this guy's finally ready to get baked, <laughs> so, so to speak. 12 to 14 minutes at 350 until the surface of the cake no longer looks wet and it bounces back when poked. Allow it to cool completely about 30 minutes before cutting it into rounds, using a six inch pastry ring and then that's all we need so the rest of this cake becomes snacks. Next up the filling and for this we're gonna make a chocolate crème Into a medium bowl goes 50 grams each egg yolks and sugar that we're gonna beat together with vigor and over on the side we're gonna hydrate one teaspoon of unflavored gelatin and two tablespoons of cold water. Then over on the stove top we are combining 125 grams grams each whole milk and heavy cream and bringing to a bare simmer over medium heat before slowly streaming about half of it into our egg yolk and sugar mixture while whisking constantly to temper the eggs. Otherwise, you're going to end up with scrambled egg frosting. Once tempered, we're going to slowly pour it back into the milk mixture, once again whisking constantly, bring it back over to the stovetop and cook over medium low heat until it reaches 185 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, we're going to kill the heat and add the hydrated gelatin. This is going to help stabilize our filling even after a stint in the freezer. Once once the gelatin is fully melted, we're going to bring this guy back over to the prep station where we have 110 grams of finely chopped chocolate awaiting underneath a fine mesh sieve, through which we're going to pour our custard to catch any bits of coagulated egg, then we're pacing around anxiously for about 30 seconds before whisking everybody together until completely smooth and no errant chunks of chocolate remain. Then this guy's headed onto an ice bath where we're going to whisk and mix every once in a while about every three or four minutes until it's thick and creamy and registers 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're going to beat in 60 grams of softened butter. Up, oh, this butter's green too. What a curious thing. That's probably fine. A little bit at a time, we're going to beat in the butter using a hand mixer, making sure that the butter is fully emulsified into the clemu before adding another dollop. The great thing about using uh, green butter in frosting is that it never gets heated, so the um, strength of the butter's butteriness doesn't get, you know, deactivated in the oven. Anywho, it's time to assemble our cake insert. First goes a layer of our chocolate cardamom cake, followed by a generous layer of chocolate clemu, making sure it's all nice and even and smoothed out before adding the second layer of cake. Then this guy's ready for a trip to the deep freeze, at least six hours, ideally overnight. Then, just before assembly, we're gonna make ourselves a blackberry mousse, for which we're gonna need about 160 grams of blackberry puree. So give about two pints of blackberries of Blitz in a food processor before passing through a fine mesh sieve, weighing out 160 grams, and setting aside, because once again, we're busting out the gelatin. Two teaspoons worth hydrated in 75 grams of water. This, likewise, is going to stabilize our mousse and help it survive the freezer. To melt it into the blackberry puree, we're gonna dump about half 
half of the puree into a small saucepan along with the gelatin, stirring over medium low heat until melted and adding back into the remaining puree. Now set that aside because the basis of our mousse is going to be an Italian meringue, for which we're gonna need 85 grams of egg whites separated in the bowl of a stand mixer, beaten together with an eighth teaspoon of cream of tartar until light and frothy. Then over on the stove top, we are combining 50 grams of water with 125 grams of sugar, cooking over medium heat until it reaches 240 Fahrenheit, the softball stage. Then with the mixer running on medium high speed, we're going to very carefully stream it right between the whisk and the bowl, then continuing to beat on high speed for anywhere from seven to 10 minutes until it reaches the soft peak stage. Then we're gonna take our Italian meringue and put it in a large bowl for easier working and fold in about half of our blackberry gelatin puree, folding gently so as to not deflate, then pouring in the other half and folding until mostly combined. Then we're gonna add 200 grams of heavy cream, likewise beaten to soft peaks. And then so we don't dilute the already pretty lavender looking color, we're gonna add a little bit of food coloring before likewise folding it into the blackberry mousse in stages. The end result should be a soft but flowy mousse. And with that, it's finally time to assemble. Go ahead and grab your fully frozen cake insert, place it on top of a thing, and gently heat the ring using a torch from a distance and moving quickly until all the frost has disappeared from the steel. At that point, your cake insert should pop right out. Then to assemble, we're gonna dump our mousse into a silicone entremet mold, pushing it all the way up the sides to make sure that there are no bubbles or gaps before dropping in our cake insert and pressing down, squooshing out any excess mousse and getting the cake flush with the mold. Use an offset spatch to clean off any excess mousse, wipe the damn thing clean, and plop it in the freezer once again for six to 24 hours. And then it's time for one last gelatin thing, the Galaxy Mirror Glaze. Three teaspoons of gelatin are going into 225 grams of water, and then in a small saucepan, we are combining 250 grams of sugar, 100 grams glucose, and 150 grams of sweetened condensed milk. This is headed over to the stovetop where we're gonna bring the mixture to a simmer, remove it from the heat, and add the hydrated gelatin, stirring to ensure that it has been melted. Then we're using this mixture to melt 300 grams of white chocolate. Pour it over top, let it sit for 10 to 15 seconds, and immersion blend on high speed for about 30 seconds or until completely smooth. Pour it through a fine mesh sieve to catch any errant bits, and subdivide about three quarters of a cup into different spouted containers. Then using ample food coloring, we're gonna color the largest container in almost purplish black, and the rest of them various hues of purple, pink, and blue. Also lots and lots of holographic edible glitter. Once all the glazes are between 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, we're ready to glaze. Let's go ahead and grab our cake out the freezer, gently retrieving it from its silicone mold, and place it atop a tall, narrow thing. Then in our largest container of our darkest glaze, we're gonna swirl our different colors over top. As I discovered, you really cannot overdo this, so go crazy. Once you got some nice patterns in there, it's time for the highlight of my week. Behold the birth of a galaxy, about the closest any of us are gonna come to playing God. As you can see, I wasn't happy with the amount of color in my galaxy, so luckily you get a couple cracks at this before it starts to set. You really can't overdo it, so just keep trying until you got it where you like it. Once you're happy with your infinite worlds, you may rest for about 15 minutes. Because once everything has stopped dripping, we're gonna add some more stars by virtue of some white food coloring and a food grade paintbrush. Just flick it at your cake from all directions until it is bespeckled with unquantifiable star systems, quasars, and future potential homes for humanity. Then we're gonna plop around to a cake ring and put it in the fridge for about four hours so the cake can defrost and the glaze can set. Once that's all set, we're ready to transfer very, very, very carefully to a cake stand. Try to pretend like you can't feel Paul Hollywood's eyes burning into your back. Give her a playful spin, maybe pop out the phone, get a few pictures for the socials. And then comes the surprisingly difficult act of slicing. After about three days of work, I've never been so scared to cut something open in my life. I wanna make sure that I get it right. Eventually, you just gotta nut up, take a deep breath, and plunge your knife in. Wiping it down between slices to make sure that your cuts are clean. Then, moment of truth time, how's it gonna look? Beautiful. Clean, distinct layers ensconced in an otherworldly orb of moose and unexplored star systems. But how's it taste? And the answer there is kind of a mixed bag. The cremeux is creamy, the cake is dreamy, and neither taste of, um, uh, green, but using fresh blackberries made the mousse taste a little earthy, and I might recommend you use strained blackberry jam instead. But in the end, massive success, thanks in large part to kitchen producer Kendall Beach, whose incredible knowledge of patisserie made this cake possible. And thanks to my personal hero, the guy from High Maintenance, someone who we could all take a page out of his book, you know what I mean? Like, we could all stand to be a little bit more patient, a little bit more accepting, a little bit more like roll with the punches, man. Especially today when, you know, like, um, shit, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs>